Hey guys, Greg here. Hey man, I want to show you guys a little trick I learned on how to calibrate your speakers, all right? And then how to take that calibration information and use it in like a standalone mixer or a hardware DSP processor. Anyways, without any further ado, let's get to it, huh? So the gear for this video, I'm gonna use the Midas M32R the Behringer ECM 8000 and the QSC RMX 2450 amplifier. And then there's some old speakers I got, some Design Acoustics uh, PS10A. I picked them up for next to nothing. When placing your microphone, make sure to put it in the up position, which I've always find odd because it's an omnidirectional mic picks up sound from all directions. Huh. Okay, so now I've got my speakers connected to the amplifier and I've got my wonderful Behringer calibration mic. And now we're gonna run through uh, putting the mic in different positions in the room and we're going to get kind of an average for about seven positions. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick our measurement from the spectrum here, and I've just got one called me. I'm gonna do 148 dB per octave, and I'm gonna press unmute on the uh, mixer here, and then collect my average for this location. Okay, six more positions to go. All right, we have captured our six or seven positions. Now we're going to average them and make them uh, one calibration, like uh, just like one one thing. So we hit the merge button and it merges all of those into one average. And then we are going to make a compensation filter here. Ugh. Choosing that last and final capture, which is a merge. Picking our reference of flat, which is what we want to do. And then you pick FIR. And then it makes a compensation curve for the, the spectrum data that we've just captured. And to uh, demonstrate this, uh, I'm gonna insert this on the channel. And now you can see that it's much flatter than it was. So that's cool and all. Track is doing its thing. It's made our filter. But now what we want to do is take this filter that it's made and burn it into the M32R or a standalone hardware processor. The method I'm going to use here, it can be used anything that's got a parametric or, or a graphic EQ. It can be used on just about anything. So let me show you how to do that right now. Okay, so this is the part where we're going to transfer the, uh, the EQ that Waves Tracked has done for us into the M32R or X32 or whatever the hell DSP you decide to use today. So what I've done is I've whipped out uh, two Spectrum here and I've got them overlaid on top of each other. So the uh, red line is showing uh, just the raw signal from the mixer as it is. And the green line is showing what the mixer should be putting out or what we're gonna make. We're gonna change the EQ so it looks, ends up looking like the green line. But before I do this, like flat is great, but I'm actually gonna give the system a bit of a bass tilt. 
because I like bass. And I'm not gonna do like a haystack where uh, all of the bass is increased in the low end. I'm actually just gonna tilt the whole thing flat on that, on that axis there. So this shouldn't be too hard to do. Okay, so I'm gonna make that tilt. And to do that, I'm gonna use FabFilters Pro Q3. Uh, and it's pretty easy to do. You just add a new uh, filter here, choose the flat tilt option. Doesn't matter what frequency you put it at. And I like to do, oh, 7 dB minus seven. So it tilts the whole spectrum down that way. Uh, for safety, I'm gonna add some more filters here. Let's do a high cut at oh, 24 dB per octave. We don't need anything above 19.5, maybe 36 dB per octave. Yeah, there we go. And we don't need anything below, man, on these speakers, probably don't need anything below uh, 50, let's just say 45. So I'll do 24 dB per octave. <clears throat> low cut, let's say 45 hertz. So we've got a tilt, and then the extreme far ends are cut off because we don't need them. And there's no point in trying to reproduce them because the speakers are not gonna do that. I think they're like four or five inch drivers inside of these. Now we're gonna use that filter that we've made and we're gonna put it into the mixer. So I'm actually gonna make this DSP, the green, I'm gonna bring up the green tray so we can kind of get them matched. It's mostly in the middle, right about there, okay. So here comes the fun part of actually getting this to work. Now we have, uh, the EQ that you want to patch in is not the regular graphic EQ. You want to use the, the true EQ, either the stereo or the dual mono or whatever, but you want to use the true EQ. Uh, that one, oh, I forget the science behind it, but it's got some kind of compensation for in interband doohickeys and stuff. And so you're more likely to get what you see on the graph, which is, which is gonna be what you want. So we are going to do GEQ on faders. Okay. And we're gonna start on the low end here. So we're just gonna start changing this around so the red trace matches the green trace. Now it's really important that you don't use pink noise for this, believe it or not. You actually want to use uh, a sign sweep like I'm doing right now. It's kind of annoying because it keeps the, uh, the graph kind of jumps around like this. So now that we've copied this, we don't need to use Waves Tracked anymore. The EQ is now in the mixer. Cool, right? Uh, and you can do this spectrum copy technique with more than just Waves Tracked. You can use it with, say, if you use IK Multimedia's Arc, you can use it with, uh, with that too and copy their spectrum out. Say if you've got their MEMS microphone or whatever that stuff is and you calibrate your room and now you always have to have that plugin open all the time, which is cool and all. Uh, but wouldn't it be cool to take that calibration information that ARC has made, that, that filter that they produced, and burn it into something else? And this is the closest way to do that. Cool guys, uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. 
don't like, don't subscribe. I mean, whatever. It's a free country. You can do what you want. Uh, let me know if you liked it, if you want to know more information, or if I should update something. Uh, comments down below, which would be this way. <laughs> okay, well, until next time.